How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and in today's video we're going to be previewing week 6 of the 2023 CFL season. I think we have a pretty interesting slate this week so let's get into it. So starting off on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern we have the 1-3 Hamilton Tiger Cats visiting the 0-5 Edmonton Elks and obviously the story with this one is Edmonton having yet another chance to break that home losing streak. I don't know how many games it's at now kind of lost count, but I think this is a good chance for the Elks to break this streak with the struggles that the Ticats have been having. Obviously, the Elks coming off a heartbreaking loss last week, but had an improved effort in that one, so interested to see how they come out and play in this game. The players I'm watching in this one, running back James Butler for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Elks have had a terrible time stopping the run so far this season, so it's going to be interesting to see if the Ticats Cats can exploit that with Butler. Hamilton, not a team that traditionally runs the ball very well, but they have been commanding to the run a little bit more this year with Butler coming aboard. Then for Edmonton, I'm going with wide receiver Stephen Dunbar, a former Hamilton Tiger Cat, had 1,000 yards, I believe, last year for the Tiger Cats and has been probably the most consistent receiver for the Elks so far this season. That's not saying much, but I think Dunbar's had an okay start to his Elks tenure. So those are the players I'm watching for in this game. In terms of who's going to win this game, I mean... I just have kind of a gut feeling about this. I have a terrible feeling as a Tiger Cats fan going into this game. I'm actually going to take the Elks to win this game 18-16. to I feel like I don't have much confidence in the Tiger Cats going into this game because of, uh, you know, even though they're you know, facing a team that hasn't won at home in such a long time, the Tiger Cats just did not look convincing in that win last week against Dustin Crum, the third string quarterback for the Ottawa Red Blacks. They only held on by the skin of their teeth in that one. So, Honestly, I think I'm going to take the Elks to win this game. I just have a feeling that this is going to be the week. If they're not going to win this time at home, I don't know when it's going to be. Then Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we have the 3-0 Toronto Argonauts visiting the 2-2 Montreal Alouettes. The Alouettes coming off those back-to-back -back losses after a 2-0 start to the season. The Argos coming off their second bye week already this season. I don't know who's making the CFL schedule. It's kind of weird for their schedule so far this year, but... I digress. The players I'm watching for on this one, defensive lineman Sean Oakman for the Toronto Argonauts. The Alouettes have had a tough time protecting Cody Fajardo so far this season. I don't know if that's on Fajardo himself or the offensive line, but he has taken a lot of sacks. I believe they said he's on pace to almost take 100 sacks this season, so not good for the Alouettes offensive line, but could be a good thing for Oakman going into this game, playing up against them. And then for Montreal, I'm going with kick returner slash wide receiver Chandler Worthy. Was very close to breaking a few uh, big returns last week that got called back by penalty. So I think he's itching to break one against his former team, Toronto, in this game. So I think it's going to be a very entertaining game in this one. I think the Alouettes will give the Argos a very good game. But I'm going to take the Argos to win this game coming off the bye week 24-19. to on the road in Montreal. I think it's going to be a very, very good game. Uh, but I think that uh, Toronto just has the better roster right now. So I'm going to take the Argos to win this one. And then on Saturday, we actually have our first doubleheader of the entire CFL season so far. Starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, we have the 4-1 Winnipeg Blue Bombers visiting the 1-3 Ottawa Red Blacks. And the story in this game is that Dustin Crum, the third string quarterback for the Ottawa Red Blacks, is now going to be their starting quarterback for this one. Looked pretty good coming off the bench cold against the Thai Cats. Uh, almost came away with uh, the game-tying touchdown drive on the last play, but came up just short. So we'll see how he does in his first career CFL start here. It's hard to picture a worse possible scenario for a quarterback making their first career CFL start than to go against this Winnipeg Blue Bombers defense. So I'm interested to see how... Dustin Crum plays in this one, and he's my quarterback to watch. I think he's going to use his feet a lot. You saw that against Hamilton. I think he almost had 100 rushing yards and about a half worth of football. So pretty impressive from Crum, but he's going to have to move the ball through the air as well if he wants to beat Winnipeg. And the player I'm watching for Winnipeg is defensive back Dietrich Nichols, who I think is the best uh, defensive back in the CFL right now. Does not get enough credit. I think he is arguably a top 10 player in the whole league right now. Uh, just a guy that disrupts a lot of passes, doesn't get a lot of attention because of the position that he plays. We don't really talk about defensive backs that much, but I think he is the best player at his position in the entire league. In terms of who is going to win this game, I think everybody's going to be taking Winnipeg to win this one. I'm going to take them to win 33-17 to on the road in Ottawa. I just think they have too many more weapons than the Red Blacks do at this point. Hard to expect 
Crum to play that well in his first career CFL start going against that defense, like I said. So I'm going to take Winnipeg to win in a pretty convincing way. And then moving on to the finale and the second half of the doubleheader on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have the 1-3 Calgary Stampeders visiting the 3-1 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Very interesting starts to the season for both of these teams. Saskatchewan with three close wins, including one against Calgary. Calgary with a couple of heartbreaking losses to start the season have not looked very good, but we'll see if they turn it around here. Calgary's player to watch in this one is defensive back Kobe Williams, who's been a guy that's uh, a newcomer to the unit, but has made a handful of plays the first couple of weeks of the season. Looking to see if that continues and he's uh, could make a big play, maybe an interception in this one of Trevor Harris. And then for Saskatchewan, I'm going with another defensive back, and that's Nick Marshall. Back-to-back -back games with game ceiling interceptions. You don't see that too often. Very much a maligned player over the past couple of years. Known as a guy that gets beat a lot. Uh, gives up a lot of big plays. But he takes the ball away as well. Probably the best ball hawk of any cornerback we have in the CFL still to this day. So I'm interested to see how those two defensive backs play in this one. I think this is a really tough game to pick. Went back and forth. But I think Calgary's going to have a little bit of the motivational edge given that they lost in overtime a few weeks ago to Saskatchewan. I think that Calgary arguably looked like the better team in that one. I mean, I think this is going to be a very close game. It always is when these two teams get together. But I'm going to take Calgary to win by 1 point, 28 to 27 on the road in Saskatchewan. Keep their hopes alive for a third place uh, finish in the West Division this season. And um, I'm excited to see how this one plays out. But with that said, that is just your preview for week six of the 2023 CFL season. Be sure to let me know your predictions down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.